Welcome to AM Buffalo this morning, Dr. George Krube. You're the director of the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. And it's so great to have you on the show this morning for dry January. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. How do you know you have a problem with alcohol? I joke about all the champagne I drink. How do we know when we're hitting that point when drinking is a problem for us? Well, a very, very early sign is that when people are uncomfortable with your drinking um, and, and feel uncomfortable and start walking away, it's something to pay attention to. But, uh, you know, broadening that out, it's, it, it, for me, it's impairment in social and occupational functioning. And so if you start to see a deterioration in your personal interactions, if, you, if, you, if you're late for work, if you're not making your work deadlines, you're not sleeping well, these are all things that are really indicators of uh, maybe there's a problem. How much is too much from a health point of view to be drinking? Well, there's really no completely safe amount of alcohol, particularly for women, because any small amount of alcohol can epidemiologically contribute to the, the risk of breast cancer. But, but the dietary guidelines are one drink a day for females, two drinks a day for males, no more than 14 drinks a, in a week for, for males, and, and no more than seven drinks in a week for females. And, and that doesn't mean you should take all 14 drinks in the same day, okay? So, just for the record. Okay, good, all right, that's good to know. What do you think is the most important thing for people to, to know when it comes to drinking and walking that fine line between enjoying it and abusing it? We tend to think that if uh, one drink or one dose of a drug is good for us, that then four drinks or four doses of the drug are good for us. And that's almost inevitably not the case, whether you're talking about aspirin or you're talking about alcohol. You know, four is not better than one. Um, you know, and, and in fact, with alcohol, four can be toxic, not to mention all the deleterious effects on, on your liver and so on and so forth. Well, this is good because we actually have someone on the show today talking about mocktails. So enjoying drinks without any alcohol at all. Now, if you think you have a problem with alcohol or if you think your friends have a problem, what is the best plan of action? You can check out some of our websites, Rethinking Drinking and the uh, NIAAA Treatment Navigator. You know, I'll dive into the uh, dry January if you'd like. I mean, you know, that allows you to reevaluate where you're at. And, you know, if you stop drinking for a month and you start sleeping better and you're feeling better and your GI system, your gastrointestinal system feels better and your interpersonal relationships start improving and you're back into work with a, with a real zest. I think your body and life are telling you something and you, you need to listen to your body. So I think those are some of the first steps. What do you say to people who might be thinking, uh oh, no more champagne for me. Maybe I'm speaking for myself here. You know, there are plenty of options now, and it's becoming more and more socially acceptable to go to dry bars, to have mocktails, to just simply have a, a sparkling water. And there are lots of reasons not to drink. If you're planning on being pregnant, if you are pregnant, if you have underlying conditions, if you're taking medications that may interact with alcohol. Um, you know, even for our Asian friends, I mean, about 30% of them have a, an allele for aldehyde dehydrogenase that doesn't work and so they get a flush reaction if they drink, so they don't drink at all. What is that? What's actually going on there? So alcohol is metabolized. It doesn't get cleared through the kidney very much at all. And when you're trying to break it down, there are two enzymes involved and one is called acid aldehyde dehydrogenase and they're Asian individuals, about 30% of them, you know, have an allele that doesn't work and so they don't make the enzyme, and so they don't have the enzyme. This is just really fascinating information. It's really great to have you on the show this morning. Are there any um, final thoughts that you have that you'd like to leave us with before we wrap this up? Very, very simply, you know, if you just type into your search engine, N-I-A-A-A, -A -A, you'll come to all the things that, that I've been talking about. So, you know, that's my final advice. Let's do it, dry January, make it a good one. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for the interest and great to talk with you. That is all wonderful information. If you or someone you know would like to take a break from drinking, but you need some help, there are many resources out there right now. A great place to start, as you heard just then, is it's right there on the screen. It's N-I-A-A-A, -A -A, so three A's, dot N-I-H dot gov. But you know what? 
The easiest way to get there, just type Rethinking Drinking into the search tool on your web browser. It'll take you right where you need to go. And it was interesting because my father actually had that issue with drinking where you, know, you get that flush reaction that the doctor was talking about. And actually, I have cousins who have that same problem. So this is very real. And I always just thought he didn't like to drink. So there you go.